Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing my favorite brands. What are the best products and what are the worst products from the brand? Could be some controversial opinions here, but that's what I'm here for to tell you what I like and what I don't like. So let's get started. We are going to start with Anastasia Beverly Hills. Let's start with my favorite palette or product. My favorite product is the Sultry palette. It is beautiful, perfect combination of cools and warms. The one silver color in there is just like such a pop of color. And then you have like just a random, but really kind of really fits in there, a pop of peach. Um, that palette is probably my all-time favorite ABH palette. Right up there with Modern Renaissance, but it snuck up just a little bit because I like smoky eyes. So, what is my least favorite? My least favorite from ABH would probably be the Amrezy palette. I kind of knew I was going outside of my comfort zone with this guy, but a little all over the place again it's nothing that I hate but as you can see I've never really used it either so but oh kind of is pretty it makes me want to use it moving along anyway next Huda Beauty so probably my favorite palette from Huda Beauty I can't why I keep saying palette like it automatically has to be an eyeshadow palette an eyeshadow obsession. I need eyeshadow anonymous. We've already talked about this. But my favorite palette from Huda Beauty, please hold, the Naughty Palette. This palette is just awesome. Aside from what the hell ever this is, little jelly balls. I don't understand what the hell she was doing with this, but the colors, oh, it has such an awesome, like you can see there, it has kind of two different metallics in there. You can dip your brush into just the lighter color or you can go into the darker color if you want to. But just to show you two of the colors out of that palette, that is the one I kind of mixed it together and then that is the metallic gold. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> Moving along. My least favorite product from Huda Beauty, which I do not have because I had a reaction to it, and it is the liquid foundation. Not the new liquid foundation, the original liquid foundation. I actually just ordered the new one to give it a try and see what I think of it. But this is her original, more matte formula. Like most of her products, very scented. Uh, it broke my skin out. Which is never a good situation. I like good full coverage foundation, but this one was almost too full coverage to where it was more on the kiki side of full coverage. Next, we are moving along to one of my girls, my BFFs, Natasha Denona. Favorite product from her. I tried to pick some other because there's so many, so. I tried to pick some maybe I haven't talked about as much, so it's not like, oh God, Holly, just shut up about it. We already know. But I love it. The Glam Palette. If you ask me if you're going to invest in a palette and you want to get your money's worth, the Glam Palette is where it is at. Oh, it has the most amazing array of colors. It has your cooler colors and then you have your warmer colors, but it's not like overly warm to where you're getting into the oranger side of things. 
it's just like right there in the middle and it's just the perfect array of eyeshadows if you want an everyday palette if you're starting the palette is so easily blendable but this girl is my favorite now we're gonna move along not something that I necessarily disliked from her but I was kind of disappointed I didn't feel like the shadow formula was as blendable as her other midi size palettes are um, not even as blendable as some of her small size palettes are but it would be her sunset palette um, I looking at it it would be like my dream because I am all about the yellows the reds the browns but for some reason the formula just did not work for me moving on to my other friend Charlotte Tilbury I am not going to put my favorite because you can't get it anymore. Charlotte, bring the fire rose back. She's beautiful. She's blendable. She's everything we want. We just need her back. But if I had to pick another thing, her bronzer. The Flawless Airbrush Bronzer. Yes, it has a pretty price tag at first. You're going to pay $55 for it. But the compact is refillable, which is awesome as far as environmental goes. You're not going to be throwing away that beautiful compact every time. It is the smoothest, the softest, the most blendable, buttery, natural looking bronzer I have ever used. My least favorite. Charlotte, I'm having some trouble. I'm having some trouble with understanding why the damn concealer keeps creasing on me. I have tried everything. I've tried setting it right away. I have tried not setting it. I've tried baking it. And I want to love this concealer because for the most part, I love everything from Charlotte Tilbury. But this concealer, I cannot get to work for me. Am I doing something wrong? Is there anybody that thinks it's amazeballs and I'm just over here on an island by myself? If so, help your girl out. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tips, hints, tricks, whatever. Next, we are going to move on to ColourPop. A little more of your affordable range of things. ColourPop, there are so many amazing products, honestly. But for me, one of my favorite ColourPop palettes that I constantly find myself going back to if I want an easy everyday look or if I just want my eyes to pop because my eyes are hazel is the Making Molds. It has an awesome arrangement of your transitions, of your deeper contours. These colors are so unique and you wet them and but they like if you wet that color and put it on the inside part here it pops it is beautiful there's so many that I probably could have picked for color pop because I have an entire drawer right over here that is nothing but color pop but I had to go with that one because it was really a tie between that one and going coconuts but I talked about going coconuts too much, so I'm going to give you a little different perspective. Next, my least favorite color pop, and I feel like this one, I mean, on paper, it's everything that I would want, but I feel like it's so underwhelming. Color pop releases so much that sometimes things just fly under the radar, and this one was definitely one of them, the sandstone palette. The color arrangement, beautiful absolutely beautiful but some of them just weren't as like I, I'm not really a huge fan of the mattes that have like your glitter in them because generally if I'm going for a matte I want it to be matte so it was some of those in between colors in there that kind of threw me off some of the colors are absolutely gorgeous like this green color it's beautiful but it's not something that I would be like, hmm, what do I want to wear today? Oh, the sandstone palette. It just didn't do enough to stand out. Next, we are going to go with 
Too Faced. My favorite palette from Too Faced. It was a close tie between this one and the Sweet Peach palette. But if I'm going for something that I know that is never going to let me down, it is I actually called this the Born This Way palette the other day, which it is Born This Way, but it's actually called The Natural Nudes. So this one, it's like I said the other day, you can take this with you and only this and you have everything you're going to need if you're going away, if you're starting out as a makeup artist and you don't want to spend that much money on a ton of palettes. This one is an awesome one to start out with. You have all of your mattes, pretty much any transition color you could want to go for. If you want to go for more of a pink look, you have those, that little section right there. You have the lighter brown section blocked off and over here you have your darker browns and golds. This palette makes it easy keeps it simple with a great formula and yeah go out and try it every year Too Faced comes out with their holiday palettes and I feel like some are great some are hits and then some are just an easy cash grab and I felt like this one was an easy cash grab again looking at it I thought oh I would love those colors but then I opened it and I'm like it confused me I like my, I like, I get creative, but when it's all over the place like this one is, I just, what, I didn't know where to go, what to do. You can see I barely even touched this palette. <laughs> and it has some beautiful colors in it. Like these are the Too Faced colors like they're known for, those beautiful metallics. But I just, and then some of them are so close together. Like those two colors are almost identical. The two colors are so similar. And I just felt like it wasn't one of your greatest hits. Sorry. One of my favorite brands. And it's not even, oh, it's gonna be an unpopular opinion. But let's start off with the good part. So one of my favorite things that Hourglass does is their powder products their um, their blushes, their diffused powders, their bronzers. They come out with a palette that has some of their best or sometimes limited edition powder products. And this one this year was awesome. This one is, it's not a highlight, but it's almost, I mean, you can use it as a highlight if you like something very soft and natural. But what I like to do with it is take a big, fluffy powder brush. This guy's dirty for my bronzer. But, like, taking this and swooshing it in, swoosh, uh, swooshing, swooshing it around in the powder, and then dusting it in small circles all over my face. It can take, like, a very extra powdery look and just kind of bring it to life. You see how, I don't know if you can, there, you can kind of see how it just adds that little bit of glow and life back into the skin. Oh, perfect. And then their blushes, they have like a little mixture of a glow in it and then your blush. Our glass is all about the glow from within look and powder is definitely somewhere where they are amazing at that. Unpopular opinion. <laughs> um, so a few years back, they came out with their stick foundation. Everybody thought it was the end all and be all of stick foundations. I did not like it. Sorry, I'm waiting for the apples and tomatoes. <laughs> At first, it's beautiful. It goes on beautiful, but it would patch off on me. Maybe it's just a holly thing, maybe it's just my skin, but it would come off and like like around my chin area, you know how throughout the day, if you're gonna if it's gonna break down, it'll either kind of be more around your nose or your chin. That it would break down extra soon. Like I would be wearing it for an hour and I would start to see it breaking apart already. And I wanted to love it. I bought it several times wanting to love it and it just can't get it to work for me. Maybe it's because I have more combination skin. I know it's more of a 
not oily, but a, um, a more dewy base. <sighs> Just didn't go the way that we wanted it to go. So next and last but not least, we are going to go with Dior. Um, Dior, and this is going to be another unpopular opinion when it comes to the negatives, but they have the face and body foundation absolute favorite foundation I have ever used and it's honestly not it's not expensive for a Dior let me show you an expensive that little guy right there the air flash great foundation amazing leaves your skin flawless and beautiful $65 I think for this for the can and let me tell you, it doesn't last that long, <laughs> but the face and body foundation, not only does it give you the same beautiful, flawless look that the air flash does, but it's almost, almost half the price. I think, I think it's like 35 or $38. And this foundation you can wear from morning until night. Sorry, my husband interrupted me. Anyway, I really found out how much I loved this foundation when we all started having to wear masks. And you would have your foundation on for, you know, 10 minutes and you're feeling good about yourself and you're like, hey, I'm looking beautiful. And you go to take off your mask and your foundation's gone. Um, this foundation is a, like when they say face and body, it's buildable enough to cover tattoos, bruises, scars, and it is water, I don't know if it's waterproof, I hate saying waterproof as a makeup artist, because I feel like that is such a very uh, just definite term. As a makeup artist, I know that that is not always true, everything can be very water resistant, but for it to be waterproof is very hard. So anyway, I don't know where I was going with that, but uh, wearing it on your body, covering scars, covering bruises, burns, um, but yet it's light enough to wear on the face and it doesn't feel like you're wearing anything. Unpopular opinion number two, the Dior Show Mascara. I never got it. I never understood what all the hype was about. I don't have it obviously, so it's gonna be right up here. But um, I, one of my absolute all-time favorite mascaras is part of the Dior Show line. It's the Dior Show Iconic Overcurl, uh, but it's ungodly expensive. I think it's like 40, I think last time I checked it was up near, if not $40 or more. That's a lot of money for a mascara when I can go to the drugstore and get my Essence Mascara or get L'Oreal Paradise Mascara and I'm not against paying good money for my mascara um, but I felt like I wasted it when I got the Dior show so that is my second and last unpopular opinion of this video because we are done I thank you guys for watching. Let me know if there are any videos you'd like to see me film. Make sure you subscribe before you go. Leave me a comment. Say, hey, how you doing? I love this video. I hate you. Whatever the case is. But thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. And bye.